And uh, joining us now to discuss that possible threat, former Deputy Director of Security for Counterterrorism, Nick Casal. Nick joins us from Newsmax, New York. And Nick, we very much appreciate your time. You're welcome. Now, plots by ISIS to launch subway attacks on systems in the U.S. and Paris. Uh, this, this coming to us from Iraqi security, that's kind of a curious way to get this information, isn't it? Well, the timing of it and, and, and the route that the information took was, was quite questionable. Uh, however, uh, at, at no time uh, were those detained, those ISIS uh, alleged prisoners, uh, debriefed by uh, U.S. Uh, agents. Uh, and then after that, it was the, uh, the threat was not analyzed by uh, uh, U.S. agents and just passed directly. Uh, onto the uh, media without going through the normal chain of command. And that, that is somewhat questionable. Nick, how do you think this plot by ISIS could change transportation security? Well, the first thing we have to understand is that the number one target of terrorists is transportation. Uh, make no doubt about it. Uh, 250 attacks have occurred in less than uh, 10 years. They all were against some form of transportation. I mean, in our short memory, all we have to do is look back at uh, Madrid, uh, the London Underground, and uh, Moscow uh, subways. So we know uh, that terrorists want to attack uh, anything to do with transportation first and foremost before they move on to uh, strategic infrastructure or iconic targets. So Nick, if you were in charge today, what would be your number one concern to, um, to lock down to protect subway systems such as the one in New York? Well, we, we have to, you know, there's no quick fix type of approach. It, it has to be uh, numerous layers of security that make the overall uh, armor uh, to protect the system workable. And what I mean by that is that transportation, why is it a favorite target? Because the most poor system there is. There's no way that we could um, check or screen people getting on the New York City uh, subways. There's only over 350 stations. It's not a controlled atmosphere like getting on an aircraft or getting on uh, a rail uh, a line that goes from Chicago to New York and without stops. So understanding that, what do we do? Well, we have to have one vigilance, uh, a, a presence of police where if somebody does attack, uh, they know that uh, we will uh, immediately uh, respond to such an attack. But be beyond that, we have to look to uh, our fellow comrades in counterterrorism, and that's the Joint uh, Terrorist Task Force, who's responsible for investigating the alleged potential uh, terrorists and to feed us the information. We also need technology. And, and the problem that we, we see is that uh, despite all the monies being spent, uh, we're not where we should be. We're behind, uh, over budget and behind schedule. So we look at technologies for, for cameras and for sensors and in, uh, uh, blast resistant liners for underwater tunnels and floodgates. Nick, what do you think other cities that could be possible targets uh, need to do to prevent these lone wolf attacks? Well, you know, we're switching from an ISIS attack to a lone wolf attack. You know, when we've looked at, at lone wolf attacks, there's very little you can do. I mean, one of the greatest examples of a lone wolf type of attack did not deal in terrorism. It dealt with the uh, shooting on the Long Island Railroad by uh, Colin Ferguson. I mean, when we look at the potential for somebody to look at the media, to look at the events that are going on, and, and to, to be swayed to do something, almost like an Oklahoma incident, again, a non-foreign terrorist act. So, or the shooting of Rabbi uh, Kahani here in New York many years ago. So these are independent acts that somebody on their own uh, develops and goes out and implements. It's very difficult because we, we're not up on wiretaps. We're not up on surveillance. We don't know what's going through every person's mind. And uh, mindful of that, and mindful of the fact that a terrorist only has to get lucky once, we have to be lucky and prepared in every circumstance. Nick, in your mind, is there an, an, a, a sense of inevitability in terms of whether it's the New York subway or some other form of mass transportation that we will see an attack uh, or an attempt at an attack uh, sometime in the next few months? Well, we're never, we're never gonna be in a position 
uh, to bait somebody to do something. So what we're going to say is this. We're going to say that New Yorkers and all Americans uh, should go about their normal daily routines. Uh, Eight million people ride the subways. I ride the subways uh, every day. Uh, We're going to continue to live our lifestyle because there's one thing that we do know. What is terrorism? Terrorism is to inflict terror on the people so the people then compel their government to change their foreign policy. That's not going to happen. We see uh, the subways. The subways are going to have 8 million riders today, as they normally do every day. We're going to see the theaters in Times Square filled to capacity. We're not going to change. And we're also not going to bait them and say, we're prepared for you. They know we're prepared. Nick Cassell, we'll end it there, sir. We thank you very much for your insights on just uh, what is being done and the way in which Americans ought to continue to live their lives despite the specter of perhaps yet another attack. Well, Nick Casal went through it with us. Your take on what he had to say, especially about Americans, New Yorkers, not succumbing to a change in lifestyle to deal with a possible terrorist. Why don't you tweet us your comments at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's also NewsmaxTV.com slash comment. And don't forget Facebook. We're coming right back.